In this video, we're going to walk you through the installation of a flexion extruder on an i3 style printer. Aside from what comes in the flexion kit, you'll also need the Allen wrenches that came with your printer, a crescent wrench, and uh, you'll want to set your printer up on a work surface where you can get access to both sides of it. The first thing you want to do is remove the old extruder components. And to do this, you'll start by removing the main screws that go through the fan and into the motor. That'll release the motor, uh, which you can remove from the back side and disconnect the cable. Then remove both fans and unwind the cables to get them out of the way. Then you'll remove the two screws from the bottom of the carriage assembly that attach the mounting block for the hot end. And that allows you to tilt the hot end and get better access to the, the screw that holds, holds the temperature sensor on. Be careful not to put too much strain on the assembly at this point because you can damage the wires to either the temperature sensor or the heater. So you want to loosen the screw that's holding the temperature sensor in place and remove the sensor and then do the same thing for the heater. And the heater screw can kind of be difficult to get to through the insulation. So you may need to remove the insulation in order to get to the screw that's clamping the heater in place. Then you can set the old hot end aside and start working on the drive mechanism for the extruder. You want to start by removing the screw that acts as the main pivot for the arm. And when you do this, put pressure down on the arm, holding it in place so that the, um, the force of the spring doesn't load the threads as the screw is coming out and damage the threads in the motor. Then after the arm comes off, you can remove the, the rest of the old extruder drive assembly, so both the main block and the drive gear. Then when you have the full motor cleaned off, um, all the components removed, the first thing you want to do is take the shoulder screw from the pivot point in the arm and test the fit in the motor to see that the screw threads all the way in until the, the base of the shoulder is in contact with the face of the motor. In this case we're good to go, but if the screws that hold the motor together are too long, there might not be enough available thread for that shoulder screw. So in this case, um, you can go back to the website and see pictures of replacing the two um, top screws in the motor, actually not replacing them, but removing them and putting a washer that's included in the kit underneath each of those screws to increase the amount of thread length that's available. Then at, at this point you can install the arm of the flexion unit by putting the arm in place on the, on the motor faceplate and threading in the shoulder screw until it's snug. Then you can install the cam in the same manner. Then go back and re-tighten both shoulder screws, the one that hold the, holds the arm in place and the one that holds the cam in place. And then loosen the set screw that makes contact with the cam um, so that the arm can rotate out of the way when you install the drive gear. Then you can slip the drive gear over the shaft, but this part is a little bit difficult because you have to make sure that you get precise alignment of the groove in the drive roller with the uh, groove in the idler roller to make sure that the filament doesn't twist as it's being fed. So to start off, get, um, get the alignment close uh, with, the, with your eye. You know, line up the two grooves and then torque down the set screw on the motor shaft. Then take a piece of rigid filament, either ABS or PLA or something um, of comparable hardness and use the crescent wrench on the flat of the shaft to rotate the shaft and draw the filament in. And you may need to adjust uh, the rotation of the cam and you may also need to adjust the set screw so that there's some compression on the filament 
but it shouldn't be too hard to rotate the shaft and feed the filament through. So rotate it around until you get access to the set screw that you tighten down and at that point loosen the, the set screw, kind of um, pull on the, the filament a little bit and then torque the set screw down again and this should make sure that the uh, the groove in the drive roller is aligned with the groove in the idler. Then torque the set screw back down, rotate the shaft 90 degrees, and torque the second set screw as well. The second set screw won't be on the flat of the shaft, but it will help to make sure that the, uh, the cyclic loading doesn't uh, cause the first set screw to loosen over time. Next you can start working on the hot end. The first thing you'll do is remove the nozzle and the barrel so that you can install the insulation. Line up the holes of the insulation with the, the holes for the barrel and for the nozzle and you can start by screwing the barrel in, then wrap the insulation around um, and tape it down to the opposite side and then you can install the nozzle or vice versa in this case. Then, using the wrenches in the kit, torque the nozzle down against the barrel. Um, and you want to put a fair amount of torque on this because this is creating the seal that prevents material from leaking out um, all through your hot end. Then you can install the barrel in the mounting block. And the barrel has a step on its OD that should be flush with the bottom surface of the mounting block. So you want to put pressure um, against the, the hot end toward the mounting block as you tighten it down. And this is pretty critical that, that you don't leave a gap, that you um, have the top of the barrel flush with the top of the mounting block because the, the Teflon tube is a very precise length. And the heater block is symmetric, so you may want to uh, flip the clamping screw for the temperature sensor to the opposite side, uh, depending on the, the mounting arrangement and where your cables come out and everything. And you can install your temperature sensor and your heater in the hot end. Be careful when you're clamping down your temperature sensor that you don't put too much torque on it and um, you know, bite through the insulation on the wires with the, the clamping screw. Now, in this case, the, um, the cartridge heater fits snugly in the bore of the, of the heater block, but some printers come with a six millimeter um, cartridge heater and others come with an undersized quarter inch cartridge heater. Um, in those cases, like in the first case with a, a six millimeter heater, you can use the sleeve that's provided in the kit um, that should allow you to get a nice snug fit and clamp the heater in. Then after you torque down the clamping screw on the cartridge heater, you can in install the assembly on the carriage with the two screws coming up from the bottom. Then install your Teflon tube and you want the, the peak of the tube aligned front to back in the assembly so that when you drop the drive unit over top of it, that fish mouth on the end of the Teflon goes right up uh, to the nip point between the idler and the drive roller. So then you can put the, the drive unit over top of it and make sure you get all the cables out of the way 
and make sure that the Teflon goes up through the hole in the bottom of the drive unit. And then you can reinstall your two fans, starting with the, the main screws that, that thread into the motor. And when you're um, initially torquing these, make sure that, the, that you're putting pressure down on the motor and um, getting the screws aligned. You don't want to cross-thread any of the screws. Then install your flexion inside sticker and voila, you're done.